Another new earthquake swarm is raising questions about whether the state's approach to dealing with man-made earthquakes can work. Several magnitude four or greater earthquakes near Crescent led to the shutdown of two salt water disposal wells and a 50% reduction in the volume of a third well. Yet that response may not stop the shaking and no matter what is done, earthquakes are likely to increase in number and intensity. The numbers speak for themselves. Oklahoma is shaking more often and more violently in 2015 than it has at any time in its history. Going back 30 years from 2008, Oklahoma averaged 1.6 earthquakes a year of magnitude 3 or greater. In 2014, there were 585 magnitude 3 or greater quakes. So far in 2015, there have been 533 magnitude 3 or greater tremblers. And if projections hold, there will be nearly 900 magnitude 3 or greater quakes this year. Unfortunately verifies what the USGS predicted earlier is that we are going to not only experience more, but much larger earthquakes in the near future, and that's already happening. Johnson Bridgewater is director of the Oklahoma chapter of the Sierra Club, which has joined the debate over how to stop Oklahoma from shaking. The Sierra Club wants a moratorium on salt water injection. It is not a magic bullet, and that's why we are very concerned that it does need to happen sooner rather than later. State Representative Corey Williams from Stillwater has also called for a moratorium. It's death by a thousand cuts in Payne County with all the shaking. Homeowners are, are seeing cracks and problems and things where they've never had any and there's no recourse. They both want the Corporation Commission to shut down saltwater disposal wells in the 21 counties that now make up the Commission's newest area of interest. This map shows all the earthquakes in the state since 1974 and all the salt water and enhanced oil recovery injector wells in the state. The clusters of red dots near Cherokee through Stillwater and down to Prague are earthquakes since 2009. The clusters of blue crosses are all salt water injector wells. When you lay over that a map of the Corporation Commission's area of interest, it's easy to see why this part of the state is getting their attention. But the Corporation Commission does not have the legal authority to issue moratoriums, and the wells that have been closed down or had their volumes reduced were done on a voluntary basis by their operators at the direction of the Commission. Matt Skinner is the chief spokesman for the Corporation Commission. We don't get into the issue of uh, is this thing causing a quake because that becomes then the thing you have to prove. For us the issue is what is prudent? What is the prudent thing to do based on a risk assessment? This fall, Representative Williams and Representative Jason Murphy from Logan County will hold an interim study on earthquakes. Representative Williams wants to see the Corporation Commission get the legal authority it needs. We have a duty not only to create jobs and foster economic development in the state of Oklahoma, but also to protect the citizens and the natural resources of the state of Oklahoma. And I feel very much right now that we are doing one at the expense of the other two. But new regulations are not what the energy industry favors. Kim Hatfield is an oil man and chairman of the Regulatory and Environmental Committee for the Oklahoma Independent Petroleum Association. He says the voluntary system works both ways. Data from the energy industry has helped the Oklahoma Geological Survey find earthquake faults no one ever knew were there. If the commission doesn't know about it, and uh, Joe Blow comes out and puts a well on that fault and causes a problem, it's not going to be just his problem, it's going to be everybody's problem. And that has meant turning over to the state the holy grail of the oil and gas industry. 3D seismic data, uh, it is kind of the crown jewel of the energy com companies. It is very expensive technology that is even more expensive to analyze and put to use. This is the new fault map the OGS has been able to create, but even this map is not complete because Oklahoma faults are very difficult to find. Most of the faults in Oklahoma are where the, they're called strike-slip faults, so there's not that much change in elevation, but they slide side to side, so those are much more difficult to identify. But when you mention the word moratorium, the concern immediately shows on Hatfield's face. <sighs> that, you know, first of all, we need to under, 
understand exactly what you mean by a moratorium. Stanford University professor Mark Zoback works with the Corporation Commission. He recently also co-authored a new research report that determined just how much salt water is being injected under Oklahoma. There are 4,500 saltwater disposal wells in Oklahoma. In 2011, just under 900 million barrels was injected underground. That grew in 2012 to just under 1.1 billion, and it grew again in 2013 to over 1.1 billion barrels. Reducing the volume of saltwater being injected may be a key to slowing the quakes, a reduction that may be happening on its own as crude oil prices plunge and production slows, which reduces the flow of salt water. In Logan County, the site of wells near the epicenter of the Crescent earthquake swarm in mid-July, the commission ordered Stevens Production to cut their volume at the Cat in the Hat injector site by 50 percent and shut down their chamber's salt water disposal well altogether. Devon Energy also shut down their Hopfer injector the three sites in 2014 injected more than 2.3 million barrels of salt water. Three well sites that are surrounded by numerous other injection wells. So why those three? Matt Skinner says the commission understanding of which injectors pose the biggest risk has increased substantially over the last few months. One of the biggest, of course, is the whole basement issue and that is the area below the Arbuckle, the state's deepest formation, and uh, it is the, what we call the crystalline basement rock. And that's what other people would, people like me, a layman, would refer to as the bedrock, and that's where critical faulting lies. The basement issue involves disposal wells that have been drilled all the way through what is known as the Arbuckle Formation and into basement rock. Was the basement issue known? A few years ago, yes, but did we realize we had as many wells as we thought in the basement? No, we did not know that because all of our rules in the injection program are written to protect drinking water and not seismicity. It was never a concern before. But all of this data and the work of state agencies may not stop Oklahoma from shaking. We're operating a large scale industrial facility at a mile down. Todd Hallahan is a professor of hydrogeophysics at Oklahoma State University. He says really understanding what is going on underground and how to deal with it is a very complex issue and targeting specific injector wells after a quake may not stop the shaking. The pressure pulses that are moving around can be passing another injection well. And so the nearest guy is not necessarily the culprit. Professor Hallahan also says getting injector wells out of the basement may not fix anything either. He points to studies done by the Oklahoma Water Resources Board that examined the little understood Arbuckle Formation right above the basement rock. And water tends to move up and down through it fairly easily. And there's not much between that and the basement rocks. And so plugging the wells back and getting the well out of the basement um, there's, there's no confining unit between the Arbuckle and the basement, and so that doesn't necessarily shut fluids off from the basement overall. In the mid to late 1960s, the U.S. Army discovered that injecting fluids deep underground caused earthquakes. The Rocky Mountain Arsenal shut down the injector site, but the quakes did not stop. Professor Hallahan says Oklahoma is facing a similar situation. Well, if you look at the um, Rocky Mountain Arsenal case, um, the largest earthquake was about a year after they shut down, and the, there was still noticeable seismic activity, pretty small, but it went on for about 15 years where you could detect the effects of that activity. Back in Crescent, Oklahoma, the school district is facing a major problem. School starts in just a matter of days, but the earthquake swarm left behind damage. Along one wall of the gymnasium is a crack that runs nearly the entire width of the basketball court. Looking up from the floor, you can see the wall has separated and shifted about a quarter of an inch. At the entrance to one of the school buildings, there are new cracks in the wall, and the middle school has five classrooms where the walls moved so much, the ceiling tiles were pulled loose. Bricks also fell on the entryway to the gym, but no one yet knows from where. And how much damage is still hidden from view will be up to structural engineers to figure out before children begin showing up for class.